Hey everyone, welcome back to the Camino Cafe. I am so excited to be here in Vashon again. I've got Phil Volker sitting here with me. Here we are. Here we are again. Yeah. Thank you so much for doing this this morning. It's all fun. We are at Phil's home and we've been here for the weekend for the Camino Heads Oasis and we have had such an amazing time and I'm just going to turn the camera around. This is the first time the Camino Cafe has had a little bit of an audience, but it's it's not for the Camino Cafe. It's for yeah, oh, yeah. Right? Yeah, yeah. Uh, so let's just uh, see if we can turn the camera around. Well, I'll just probably have to get up, um, but you can see we have a. Uh, so this is the early crowd. <laughs> Not everyone's up at 7 a.m. to uh, be here with Phil and I, but they'll probably be walking around here shortly. So last night we had an amazing evening and I just feel what a special evening to watch Phil's Camino right here in your yard. Right. Uh, I can't imagine and to be able to hear you commenting about the movie as it was going was... <laughs> incredibly special and I as I was driving uh, here this morning I I thought what did, what does that feel like to you to see this movie you know what was that moment like for you last night with all the Camino head community sitting here with you you're in your yard and and there you are I, I was very emotional I, yeah. I I've really actually only seen this version uh, maybe twice so uh it's all sort of new to me and it um I was very emotional everybody around me was very emotional I don't know it was it was special yeah it's incredibly special the, the moment uh when you kept saying wait for it wait for it you know the scene where you're walking across first your Camino here on Bashan and then again and then that scene when you're in Spain and yeah that's great <laughs> that's a great transition yeah, yeah. I, I, you know, just to my, uh, you know, put it on my credit here that I, I saw that that building or those series of buildings from a long way off. And I said to Todd, our photographer, we got to, you know, we got to catch that somehow. Because the colors were so fantastic. Oh, yeah. I mean, if you look at those colors, I mean, you can't find anything in our environment that matches that, yeah. <laughs> that sort of vibrancy. But so. So we did use it, you know, uh, me just walking across it because that's where the, actually where the trail was. Um, and it fit in really nicely with uh, Jessica, the other uh, person that was working on the film. She, uh, I think that was her, uh, her, her uh, idea to, to have that, you know, green, 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 green. And then all of a sudden you're in Spain. Right? Yeah. And it, that, my person is the same, my, I am the same size, you know, I just kind of go right across. It's a cool, very cool. Oh, I remember the first time I saw the film and, you know, I didn't know the story. So I didn't know that you were going to end up getting to go to Spain. Mm -hmm. And so when that scene happens, it's so incredibly special, right, everyone? <laughs> so Phil, I wonder, um, I think I know the answer to this question, but I, I'm just kind of curious, <laughs> maybe I'm wrong. But did you exercise? Like, did you work out before you built this trail around your house? Were you were you a big walker? No. <laughs> so. No, I and I thought you know uh, exercise was just dreadful. You know? <laughs> I mean, I I get a lot of exercise in what I do, but right. I don't do exercise sort of for fun, you know. Yeah. And uh, <clears throat> so I thought I always thought it was dreadful, you know. So the trail was a way to like, <coughs> excuse me. The trail was a way to, uh, well, the whole thing was a, a fantasy, you know, and it was a way to fool me into doing it. The walking was sort of uh, a byproduct right. of what I was doing. So I know that Catalina uh, has written a book about people building pilgrimages in their yard mm -hmm. and you're featured in this book. Yeah. I'm just curious, like that was a huge idea and you know, not many people do something of this magnitude. So I know the doctors were wanting you to exercise and, and you kind of went to a gym, wasn't your thing. So what made you, you know, do you remember that moment where you're like, you know what, I'm just gonna build this trail here on my property. 
I don't remember a moment, but uh, it was a very sort of creative time. And, uh, you know, we were watching The Way and we were watching, I must have watched uh, Annie's movie 50 times. Uh, Rebecca got so tired of the music that I watched it silently after a while. <laughs> I, I couldn't get enough of it, you know. And I was walking here and I was keeping, uh, you know, keeping the uh, fantasy up and I had the log book and, uh, you know, it was all good. Uh, so uh, I even forgot your question. Well, just the idea to build it, and, you ah, know. Yeah. Would you say the fantasy was to walk in Spain? What What was the yeah. fantasy at that point? Yeah, yeah, oh. yeah, 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 yeah. So to from walk the in minute, Spain, because I couldn't go, you know. Right. Um, so I said, okay, what's the next best thing? But I don't remember a specific moment. You know? Yeah. But it took a while. It took a while of engineering the trail, and it took a while of like I don't know figuring out the logbook, and it took a while uh, figuring out the maps and. Once I had that sort of uh, organized, it was, uh, you know, yeah. it was it was all fun to do it, and people would come and you know walk with me. How how many laps would you say you've done since you built it? Oh, <laughs> I mean, I know you did what nine hundred nine to equal the Camino Frances at one point, but my guess is you've walked well, many many know, more. Three thousand. Three thousand. Yeah. Wow. I don't know. That's an easy guess. I don't know. Yeah. And how many people would you say have been out here? Well, that, I, you know, I, I, they're in the logbook. So, um, and uh, email addresses for them. Uh, so I, I'm, I haven't counted uh, lately, but I'm, I'm saying there's probably 400 uh, people that I didn't know, you know, just people uh, who came uh, were curious. Or were, uh, you know, for all other kind of reasons, were just major uh, Camino heads and wanted to check in. Yeah. People I didn't know. So about 400 since we opened. Yeah. And that doesn't even include the people that live here no. uh, close by that come pretty regularly. No. It's just that the, all those people have come pretty regularly. I didn't, I'm not talking about, I'm just talking about people that came from far away. Yeah. Well, we're in Seattle anyway, and boy, the wind starts blowing. Yeah, it sure is. <laughs> so uh, when you think back about people that have visited, uh, who's come the furthest to come and walk with you? Do you have any idea? Mm -hmm. Now we had Ron and Ann from Spain. <laughs> yeah, Ron and Ann from Spain, and they're sleeping in, I guess, this morning. <laughs> Yeah, somebody yeah from there was China. a guy from China. Uh, there's like two categories. There's like people that were in Seattle anyway, and then they said, oh, we'll come to Phil's, yeah. which is the major way that people come. Yeah. But there were, um, there were some, a couple of groups that were significant that came. Uh, that I expect members of those groups to show up today. Oh, yeah? Um, that came, one, one came from Salt Lake City, and one came from... Uh, I guess it's Orange County. Okay. Upland. Uh, right. What is that? What is that called? That area. Um, Riverside. Riverside. Mm -hmm. Okay. I don't know. I don't have any geography down there, but um, you know, those um, one group came with six people, I think, to, for the weekend just to walk. Oh wow! And to uh, you know be with us, and uh, that was fun. And then the other group from Salt Lake, there was three. Uh, uh, stewardesses that came you know and obviously they had uh you know free tickets or something <laughs> but they decided to come here so that was cool they were fun um you know but those are people that just came uh specifically to be here so yeah. they get like the really gold star <laughs> <laughs> when you uh, think back about all the people that come to visit you know what's been one of the best days you know when you look back and you think wow i'm so glad i built this thing because this happened as a result just with people coming and walking with you yeah you know uh the thing turned into kind of a a salon you know in the french sense that people would uh i see people nodding yeah uh <laughs> that people would come and leave uh ideas and we would give them ideas and we would you know meld ideas together and um 
that's when it when the Camino is at its best when it's uh, operating like that. Yeah. Or our Camino, or I suppose any Camino when you're you're really hunkering down on stuff. Can you think of a particular moment? Or yeah, you know, I'm. I'm <laughs> I, there was one. We had a woman that was here once, and she was a friend of somebody else, and um. Uh, I don't know if Catherine was here. Catherine's not here right now, but. Um, She was asking me how, you know, what was going on with this walk. And I said, well, it's a place, it's a place where we figure things out. Mm. Okay. Um, okay. And then she, she kind of looked at me like straight in the face and she said, well, Phil, what have you figured out? <laughs> I love it. <laughs> and I was like, Ugh. you know, and for two weeks I was like, oh. You know, I was, I was like, I was working on a blog for like two weeks. What, what the heck have we figured out? You know, I, I don't know. Uh, maybe this, maybe that. But it, it's all been. Uh, we have been figuring things out, and it hasn't necessarily been um, sort of concrete stuff. So. Well, you know, we got to ask now. Oh no. Oh, <laughs> What do you what do you feel what have like we you figured, figured out? out? Yeah, what have whatever. you figured out recently? Boy, I really blew that didn't I? <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't know. It you know, it's kind of a lot of it is uh is sort of um reinforcement of what we already know. Mm. Right? I mean it's uh of being together of uh of uh, you know, loving each other up about uh, um, hospitality. About a lot of it is that kind of stuff where we already know it. We're just sort of, as Kelly would say, we're reviewing. <laughs> reviewing. I don't know. You know, I don't know. Ultimately, if there's that much to know. You, you know mean? what I mean? It's yeah, all. Mean? It's all sort of fairly simple. I think. How so? Like, what do well, you mean? I mean, we 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 we, we kind of know we we've been successful so far at what we've been doing. This group, yeah, uh, very successful, and uh, you know, they didn't have to go four years to anywhere to learn that. It seems like it's a lot simpler than we make out. That we could, you know, we can operate we can operate very well easily. Without a lot of uh, rigmarole or baggage. Yeah, can we? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Do you think the walking maybe helps us simplify and kind of strips away? Some yeah, stuff yeah, strips and... away. Yeah, that's for sure. Yeah. So, where do the name Camino Heads come from? Oh gosh, yeah. Right. <laughs> I've always been curious. As you know, so for those of you who, who aren't familiar that are watching this video, uh, so that's the name of Phil's blog and the name of the group informally i guess and yeah. was that your well, your idea yeah uh i don't know one thing i remember though is boy everything's rattling and rolling <laughs> one thing i remember i i had, i called annie and i said uh i'm thinking about starting this blog i got the paperwork all done and i'm gonna call it Camino heads, and she said, "Like, do it." You know, it was like, it was like, just like that, like, do it. You know, so that I that day I figured out how to do that all by myself. By the way, the whole process. Uh, thank you, thank you. It was uh, it was a stretch, you know. So, uh, but we've been operating since uh, four, 2014, and um, um, I put a post up every day, a, a blog post that was about. I don't know, it was never over 500 words, but it was, um, you know, an average of 300, I would say. So yeah. we, we put out a lot of, uh, a lot of uh, verbiage. And in the end, when uh, Catalina, our, our lovely uh, um, librarian or whatever, yeah. uh, has been working on, on shortening it, uh, consolidating it. But it, as it stands, it's two Don Quixotes. <laughs>
you know, so obviously that's not going to fly. Uh, nobody's going to sit down and read that whole thing. But I don't know. It was an interesting sort of uh, process on that. What made you think to even start a blog at this mm, point? When mm, 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 well, the nurses at the hospital wanted me to start it, so I think, okay, uh, so they could keep track of where I was in Spain, and I just kept it going after I got back. I just thought this was pretty cool, pretty fun. Yeah, I went back and read a lot of the entries last oh, night. Oh, jeez. <laughs> and um, you're right; you have been consistently writing since what 2014. Yeah. And, uh, I really recommend everybody kind of go back and check that out. I mean, I know Catalina's going to have a, her book out uh, that will have all of that as a collection, but it, it was really fun going back and reading it and uh, seeing the consistency and, and, and just seeing you write that, hey, today I walked this many miles, here's who came today. Um, how did that writing process help you during this journey? Did you find that cathartic and, and what about it helped? That's a big word. Okay. Uh, Sometimes I have big ones, not often. Yeah. It, if I can fit that in. It was sort of a way to like dump my stuff every day too. You yeah. Know? Which was, you know, it sounds weird, but uh, it's uh, it's a way to do that to 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 sort of not be isolated. Mm. That was my one of my really big items was. Do not be isolated. Yes. Um, you know, tell the story. Wow. Tell the story. You know? Tell the story. So that's what it's been about for how many years? And then recently, I had to have it. Uh, um, Chris from uh, Buenos Aires took it over because I'd been kind of, you know grooming her i guess is the right word to take it over eventually and i i got to a point where i couldn't navigate uh on the website you know i yeah. just couldn't I, my material was okay but i couldn't like put together a blog post so i said well it's time for you to do it so i sent in a paragraph every once in a while just to say i'm still kicking it. yeah so. do you have a favorite blog post that you felt yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah. can you tell us about it Ooh, yeah, I you know there's some tremendous material uh, when I was when I was coming back and going through my uh, my withdrawal or my uh, whatever you call it. You know, I was transitioning from Spain to that two months that I was transitioning after you came back. Yeah. Okay. So the reintegration back to life here. Yeah, there's some really heavy duty stuff in there, and then there's some really great stuff. I went to Lourdes in uh, 2018 with the uh, Order of Malta, and um, that was uh, really, really an interesting uh, place and uh, phenomenon and uh, gathering. And um, it's labeled a, 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 a pilgrimage, you know. Mm -hmm. So I, I felt like I was supposed to write about it because I had written about the, so much about um, the pilgrimage, you know, uh, the walk in Spain. So, so I, after a couple of months, I finally got it together to write about uh, Lourdes because it was so different and it was so subtle. And it was, you know, the way I put it after a while was, uh, you know, I've been writing about roller derby so long, and then they wanted me to write about opera, you know. Mm -hmm. It was, it was yeah. like that different, but it would, they were both pilgrimages, but they were that different. And um, so that was good. That was an interesting whole project uh, that happened, uh, you know, a couple of months after. Uh, how, did, after. how did going to Lourdes impact you? How, how was, oh. What was the difference? I don't know if I could even, you know, cover that in a half hour, but uh, it was very subtle. The, the whole thing was very subtle and, uh, and sublime. I love that word. I, that, that's a place that's sublime. Um, people come there. All, it's the second most visited place in France after Paris. They have their own airport. And I don't know. If we don't talk about it. We don't know about it, no. you know, but it's happening every day. People come and People come, people come uh, repeatedly, you know, 
it's not like they get um, it's not like they get disappointed or something. They get energized. And, um, you know, people say, oh, that must be a really, you know, you say, well, it's a place that a lot of sick people go. And then somebody hearing that would go, uh, wow, that sounds really depressing. Mm -hmm. But it's not. Yeah. You know, it's not. How does that happen? Why is that? That's what I, I got into there. It was a sort of an interesting sort of change. You know. Yeah. What do you think draws us to want to walk to these pilgrimages? Oh, you geez. know, and and the fact that we talk about it all the time, and we all want to go back. And if we can't go back, you know, we've had this lockdown, and you know, Annie started the pilgrimage in place community, and. We've all been trying to walk in our own neighborhoods, you know, we're kind of following suit after you while we haven't been able to travel. But what is it about the power of pilgrimage that draws us into it and makes us want to continue it and brings us together as a community? We, we all want to talk about it. I know we're nuts, aren't we? <laughs> Maybe a little bit. <laughs> we, we get somebody new and it's like fresh meat, you know? <laughs> You can talk to them, you know, all night long, you know, they're, they're like just, uh, <laughs> that's us though, you know. What do you think it is? Well, is I it don't know. We're very excited about the whole, the whole feeling of it. Yeah. The whole, uh, wow. The whole, the whole thing is amazing, you know, and, and we're happy with it and we're happy. We're happy when we're around it, you know. We're happy here. You know? And and somebody came up, there's a, a lady on the Camino now, and I think she's been on she's been on the Camino for three years. I mean, I know that's possible. And you see people that you go, Oh, that's that guy's been on a Camino three years. <laughs> that guy right there. You know, there's somebody that's a little bit extra scruffy, you know. <laughs> we were scruffy, but they were like, okay. But I think there are people that uh, sort of live there. Yeah. That makes sense. Yeah, they do. Yeah, they do. Yeah. Okay. Um, and she's been there. I, I don't know. Don't quote me. But I think she's been there three years. Anyway, she came up with this thing the other day that, that just rocked my world. It was kind of like, what have you figured out? You know, uh, uh, did we ever come to any conclusions on what we figured out? <laughs> Or did we just gla gla glaze over that? I don't know. Anyway. <laughs> anyway, she said the, the epicenter of the energy of the Camino is not on the trail. It's on the people that have gone home. Mm -hmm. It's us. That's where, that's where the energy is. And we got to quit looking back. I mean, it would be, you know, if you want to go back and walk, that's great. But but really, we are we are packing this energy right now out here, and that's why we have fun together. But uh, but you see, that was that was her thought was that, and I think that's really valid and a great way to come, you know, approach it. Yeah, the Camino is living in each of us. Right? Yeah, 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 yeah. And you know, I, I always think about all the people that walked before us, right? You know, people have been walking this this pilgrimage for so long and the prayers that have been said before us and that energy, I think we pick it up and then we bring it back. Yeah. And then I think um, some of us like you, you come back and you start giving back to this community, which just keeps pushing this river of the Camino forward. Wow. I like it. River. Okay. Right. It's just this river of energy. Yeah. Right? Uh, I don't know. My, my thoughts early on was to keep, you know, was to keep the flame burning. Mm -hmm. I have this image of like a little that. tiny flame. And uh, I think we've done that pretty well. I think you have. Well, I wanted to ask you, when I was watching the movie again last night, and I was thinking about you and Kelly walking, and uh, I couldn't have imagined a, a more fun walking partner than Kelly after getting to know him this week. Oh, my God. We had so much fun. And we... Uh, we made so many people laugh along the way, you know, we were just so random and erratic and irreverent and whatever you want to say, you know, like, you know, and we had a great shtick 
with each other, you know, that we yeah. would, we would say all this crazy stuff and it, it wasn't like something that, you know, you took personally. Yeah. Well, I couldn't have imagined uh, if I had been walking the Camino at that time, how badly I would have wanted you and Kelly to be a part of my family <laughs> on the Camino. Um, well, what would you say was your and Kelly's hardest day out there? You know, was there a moment where yeah. it's like, wow. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. The first day. The first day. Tell us about that. The, the, yeah. The first day was uh, 17 miles over the, over the Pyrenees. And we did that all in one day. And we got into Ron Savalas and uh, was, uh, I don't know, we had a hard time getting a place to sleep because we were in there late. Everybody got in there earlier. Yeah. yeah. But, you know, we, we made it. We were slow, but gosh, we made it. And uh, that was a hard day. Oh, my gosh, that was a hard day. That was one of my, that was one of my worst days of my life. But, uh, you know, not worse, I'm, I'm not, you know, you just, after you're done, it's it's all fun, but while you're doing it, it's the worst thing. Um, what do I want to say about that? Oh, I know. Uh, the hidden, the, the backside of the story on that one is that I, uh, that day that we walked over the, the Pyrenees uh, was my uh, worst, worst day of my um, Camino, no, my, uh, chemo okay chemotherapy yeah which is five days after you know my chemotherapy i get i get a really bad day right and that was my really bad day to walk over the really bad day on the camino uh of 17 miles up and down yeah so uh once i got done with that uh i i realized um i had it pretty much in the bag i mean it was everything else was going to be easier right, right? so I can't imagine, Phil, you, you know, that's a hard walk and uh, you're saying it's the hardest day of your life and you've got a film crew filming this, you know, yeah. <laughs> huffing and puffing going up and, you know, yeah. you had a great training ground, but this is not uphill. Yeah. Here in well, we did some work. Uh, we did some work on hills. Uh, you did. We did uh, the 500 miles here and then Kelly and I did 200 miles. Uh, with our new gear and uh, oh, I didn't know that. Well, on the road and on gravel and on hills, okay. and on stuff that we didn't have. Oh my goodness! Okay, I had no idea. So I was going to ask you what your training—you know—had this trained you well yeah. for the walk? So you did that extra stuff. Yeah, no, we were trained pretty well. It, we didn't have any. Uh, what would be the right word? Um, sort of heavy-duty injuries on the Camino. Mm -hmm. We had the we had the blisters, but we didn't have any. Uh, uh, you know, people get into things where they have to quit and, and uh, rest up for days, you know. Okay. I forget what those problems are, but there's a couple of them that were, what were those problems that were on the Camino that, huh? Blisters, passing out, the passing out. <laughs> the at the church. Yeah, but no, but I mean, it had to do with your feet and it had to do with your, uh, Tendinitis. Tendinitis, yeah. And there was another one that people uh, mixed. Uh, people had a lot of blisters. Blisters. Yeah, yeah, we had blisters, but I'm counting that as kind of a different than having those structural problems. Yeah. yeah. We're and really then, selling the Camino right now, aren't we? <laughs> <laughs> Don't you all want to walk? <laughs> oh, gosh. It's worth it, right? It was painful. Yeah. So let, let's switch gears. What was the best day out there for you and Kelly? When you, when you look back and you think, wow, that was a Camino day. What was it like? Where were you? I don't know. We had a lot of stuff like that. I mean, it was just endless, right? I mean, it was, you know, of uh, little and big uh, uh, landscapes and uh, new people. And uh, I don't know. It was just a crazy thing. It was just kind of a kaleidoscope of stuff. I, you know, they were all good days. They were really, you know, we had one, only one day when we got, rained on a little bit and the rest of the days we were uh, pretty golden yeah one uh just one story that i i really like because people say what was your favorite memory and i i don't know it took me about three years to figure that out you know <laughs> what's your favorite memory that's crazy you know i got about three thousand favorite memories. well we've got time huh we've got time I'm happy. I'm happy because I'm gonna I'm gonna unload it here. But all uh, right. 
<laughs> Let's start with number 3,000. So one reason I joined the Catholic Church was that it has this, has this um, you know, it has this ability to be uh, universal, right? It's bigger than just something on a corner. Uh, you know, it has warts and it has uh, problems in the past and we accept that and we, 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 we yeah, we accept that. We, we take that in, that's, we, we did that. Okay, we did, fine, fine. Um, so on the Camino, um, there were, all, you know, there were all kinds of religious things you could get into. And when you got to, when you got to Santiago and you got uh, your diploma, they said, did you do it for religious reasons or spiritual, spiritual reasons? Yeah. And I go, bleh, bleh, uh, bleh, uh, bleh, uh, <laughs> uh, you know, like, uh, I, I mean, it, it was like, it threw me, you know, like, what the hell, you know? So I knew, uh, I knew. <laughs> I know, right? Hang on. I knew, uh, I knew that I would get some kind of old timey written in Latin uh, diploma if I said uh, religious. So I said, oh, religious, you know. That's it, you know, I, I don't know, but I, you know, the whole thing was spiritual and the whole thing was, for some of us was religious because there were churches and there were, you know, services and there were people to talk to and there were monasteries to visit and there were you know all kinds of stuff that you could participate in if you were if you were catholic that you wouldn't necessarily want to or you wouldn't necessarily fit into uh, mm -hmm. yeah so you must have found that really meaningful after so that was cool you know that yeah. was just extra special just icing on the cake you know, to be able to do that <laughs> And one of the things, <coughs> my best memory, okay, here's my best memory because it has to do with this universality. Okay. Is that a word, universality? It is now. Is that a if, word? If it is right. now? Let's okay. see. Tim, is that a word? Okay. So it's the last day before we go down into Santiago. We're at, uh, what is it? Uh, Mountain of Joy or whatever it's called. Guzo something. Yeah. And there's a huge uh, dormitory up there that was built for when the Pope comes down there is about a cabillion people that show up. Right. Uh, it's called a Jubilee or something. So they had this giant dormitory. It's very crazy. Uh, sort of very on Spanish really. But, and it covers all, like an acre or two or something. <laughs> so we got, we got some rooms in there and they had a little, they had a common, uh, area you know like a, a a place where they had a i don't know it was a laundromat and it was a restaurant and it was a, a supermarket right and there was there's a few things that were you know people that were staying there could grab a something so we were in a restaurant we went in a restaurant we ordered some food and uh there was some big picture windows like this you know and um and i had heard there was a rumor that you know, the next day we were going to be at mass, Pilgrim's Mass. And I had heard there was so many people, which was believable because it was, we were drowning in people, uh, which, you know, that's good because you say, oh, uh, you know, you could look at it like, oh, it was a problem because I wanted to go on my community, you know, but there were so many people that they spoiled it. Or you could look at it like, oh, isn't this great? There's all these people who want to take, have this yeah. experience. Right. Right, you could say that to yourself. Um, so you have the favorite memory. Oh, the Italian priest. The what? You saw an Italian priest when you were. Yeah, out. yeah, yeah, yeah. I saw Italian priest. I'm looking out the picture window when we're waiting on our food, and I saw uh, this priest in the distance. You know, it looked like Lionel train set <laughs> priest. <laughs> And he had his vestments on and I didn't see anything else. And I go, that's kind of unusual. What is he doing over there? And I, and I finally realized he was given mass, you know, it was a mass. It was wow. gonna be, it was gonna be, uh, you know, the Eucharist was gonna be celebrated. And I go, whoa, because I, you know, the, uh, the point was I was hearing this rumor that they weren't gonna have uh, uh, the Eucharist at the service because there was too many people. Right. 
So I go, okay, I'm going to try to find out what's going on over there. So, <laughs> so I go, okay, uh, I'm going to, I'll be back, you know. So I run across uh, the open concrete, you know, I run way across. And, and, and as I got closer, I see that there's, there's about 12, 13, 14, 15 people like in this little alcove. And he's, you know, talking to them and with them. And it is a service, you know. And it looks like a group that was traveling with their priest. And they would have a service every night. So here comes this crazy American me. You know, I just I just come running in and I genuflect like that's my uh that's my badge, you know. Your ticket in. My ticket. <laughs> and I get in amongst them and they're go and they make room, you know, and and they're talking to the priest like each one is talking about their day. And then he's given a little feedback and the next one we talk about their day so we got through with that and then we got into the real service and you know you kind of even though it's in spanish or italian you know what's going on right. you know? so i was so happy to uh to have communion with them and uh and then i got after communion i got back in you know the semicircular line and and I was there for a few minutes and I realized my food was coming. And <laughs> so I just said, I said to the guy next to me, thank you. And I, and I sort of backed out and I genuflect again and I, and I ran back. It was, <laughs> that is a great memory. It was kind of, yeah, but it was kind of like a, you know, drive by, uh, <laughs> drive by Eucharist, you know, and I, but they, they were happy with me. And there wasn't really any words said well, other than my thank you, but yeah, you know, I mean, and that's that's lovely. Yeah, that's a beautiful memory. What a powerful memory. Yeah, so that's sort of what I've come down to. Although there's hundreds of other ones. But, yeah. So what was it like when you finally, you know, you're going through that tunnel, you make that turn, you see the cathedral for the first time. Could you describe for us what that moment was like? I was exhausted. Yeah. And I knew that I had to get out of there. You know, <laughs> I got to get out of here because this is killing me. Um, kind of a feeling. Yeah. So I was really happy to, you know, obviously really happy to be there. And uh, and I, I had some prayers that I left in the crypt. That, that was very uh, moving, the crypt. <laughs> But I was I was really exhausted. I could hardly walk. Yeah. So there's a famous quote about the Camino is that it doesn't give us what we want. It gives us what we need. Yeah. Okay. So you have Phil's Camino here and then you've walked the Camino in Spain. So what what do you think the Camino gave to you? that you didn't expect. Oh, wow. I don't know. That's a huge topic right there. <clears throat> I, I don't know. I was working so hard here on our preliminary walk and Annie was giving me her material. And <laughs> <coughs> I, was do, I was doing such great work in her pilgrimage work right here before I went. Yeah. So I went there and that whole thing sort of pushed me over the edge, you know. I mean, I've already done all this work. It just um, it wasn't much to push me. Yeah, was it kind of the icing on the cake? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, I mean, it just was, uh, it gave me a new view of people in the world. And the way, um, you know, a new view about God and a new view about our fellow man. Mm -hmm. yeah. Wow, what more is there, you know? I mean, that was uh, pretty, pretty amazing. Yeah. So I want to switch to, you know, you uh, <laughs> go and see the film Six Ways to Santiago. Right. You become familiar with our favorite pilgrim, Annie. And I believe if I have the story correct, uh, Rebecca reaches out and tells her, hey, you got to hear about, you know, what my husband has done out here on Vashon Island. 
Uh, and then you reach out to Annie. And of course, no one can resist you. <laughs> we all love you from the minute we meet you. And Annie says, I got to meet this guy. Yeah. So um, what, what drove Rebecca to send this to her and for you to reach out to her? What was it? I don't know. Annie? The whole thing is the whole thing shouldn't have happened. So. <laughs> I mean, really, there was so much about the movie. That, there was so much about the blog. There was so much about the way all these people came together. That was, it was just crazy cool. And um, wow, it's like not even supposed to happen this way, you know. So, right. You know, it just had a life of its own. Yeah. So we we just went with it. We 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 thought about it as uh, as Saint James uh, being sort of in charge. Yes. And so we just went with the program. You know. Could you ever imagine the day that this email goes out to Annie that this filmmaker from LA was going to show up at your doorstep for real? Yeah. And then say to you. We got a movie here, Phil. Yeah, no, she Your called. Story needs she, to be told. Yeah, she called and said, "How about March 2nd, which is about two weeks away?" And I was, I went crazy around here, you know, like, "Annie's coming, Annie's coming." But <laughs> <laughs> well, let's uh, let's bring Annie up. Annie's here with us. Oh, good. The Oasis. So we're gonna have Annie come up. Right in the that, middle here. Yeah. Okay. We're gonna have her come up and talk. And, There's a chair here. Yeah. Yeah create some room here. So this is Annie O'Neill. Um, most of you watching probably are familiar with Annie, but Annie, uh, filmmaker, author, and most of all, great friend uh, to the Camino. Uh, you've probably seen her in Six Ways to Santiago and she has pilgr pilgrimage in place. And uh, we're just all honored to know Annie. And Annie, I just wanna say that I'm so grateful for making this film and for introducing us to Phil and I, I just want to say to everyone out here, you know, I wouldn't have known Phil just like probably the rest of us, right? Um, and it just is a beautiful gift that you have given to the Camino, um, to the Camino family. So thank you so much. Oh, you're welcome. But I have to say, like Phil said, it just kind of happened. Yeah, yeah. It, it was remarkable. And I, I, I don't know, we really can't take credit for too much. Yeah. You know, it was like, yeah. what, what is going on here? And then you know, the next thing would happen and we would go, oh, okay. Um, <laughs> you know, some major talent would walk in and help us out or somebody yeah. would walk in with some money or, yeah. you know, we were beg borrowing and stealing the whole way. And, uh, so everything was a miracle, you know. Everything. And everything. it's true, you know, there was just times when it was like, okay, it's been great so far, but we just reached the yeah, roadblock. Yeah, we're fix, tired, right? yeah, we're, uh, we're exhausted, it. yeah. And then I'd wake up in the morning and somebody would say, hey, I just got a bonus and I want to give you my bonus. Wow. You know, or, you know, like something like that. And I mean, the list is so endless. It's the list in the credits, but it's also yeah. more. Yeah, yeah. Annie, what was it like that first day you got to meet Phil? Oh my God. <laughs> we were walking around here. <laughs> yeah. And Phil was just uh, being Phil. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But the day before it was sunny and bright and beautiful. And the day after was sunny, bright, and beautiful. And the day we walked was just like, we were like ground rats, you know, but- uh, I did have to borrow some boots. I think you Rebecca did. gave me some boots. Somehow we had a major fun, you know, and we realized a lot of, we realized some things that were uh, very interesting and- uh, Yeah, you know, Phil, Phil let me know Can afterwards. You, what did we realize? Yeah, well, afterwards, Phil wrote to me or told me on the phone, I'm still recovering from your visit. <laughs> but I think, you know, for me, it was like, Phil, we were walking and Phil said, um, you know, I have stage four cancer. I said, oh, Phil, that's, that's rough, I, I know. And he goes, you know, there is no stage five. Mm. I was like, oh, I, I, I can't even imagine what that's like. Right. And he goes, I'm getting an A in cancer. <laughs> Like Phil never like went to the morose, you know. He went to the funny. Yeah. He went to the quirky. He went to the unusual. He went to quirky. Yeah. The, the quirky. Yeah, that's an adjective. Quirky. Yeah. <laughs> but it, you know, it just struck me that if if I were ever in his shoes, I would want to know him. Yes. You know, if I ever got a diagnosis, I would want to know him. 
And for my friends who are, were dealing with the same thing, they should know him. So I started saying like, hey, Phil, I think we got a movie here. And he would laugh. He thought that was the funniest <laughs> thing. And he would say, I'm just a guy walking in the mud. Yeah. And, uh, you know, and somebody called me the other day and they were like, Annie, what's your story? And I was like, well, how much time do you have? You know? <laughs> <laughs> and he was like, well, you know, Phil's story. And I go, yeah, I knew Phil's story. Phil didn't know Phil's story. Phil wasn't walking around going, I'm a guy who's amazing. You know, he never thought that. Like, yeah. We don't know our story. I mean, we may know our story, but we don't talk about it. It takes somebody witnessing it. And I think that's one of the things wow. that you do. That's, that's yes. a cool thought right there. And I think that's one of the things that you do on the Camino here. People come to you and you just walk with them and witness them. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Like a lot of it, he drops yes, a lot of wisdom, right. but he also just witnesses. So people come and they, they talk to him. And in that walking, he's witnessing. And that's what we can do for each other. And that's what we need to do for each other. Mm, wow. Oh, Annie, that, Annie. that's Annie. the Camino, right? That's Is that the Camino. we are witnessing yeah. everyone's yeah. story. They're witnessing our story. Mm -hmm. Oh, Annie, that's I'm yeah, tangled that's up in the Oak Hotel, uh, Elk Motel here. Um, can you get that out there? Thanks. Um, you know, and so that's one of the things that we have to keep doing. And that's one of the things I think that Phil is teaching us without yes. saying, I'm here to teach you, we need to witness each other. But he just said it a few minutes ago when he was saying, we already know, we already know, we already know that we need to love each other up. Mm -hmm. We yeah. already know we need to give each other hospitality. I mean, that's what we do when we witness, right? Yes. So I, I'm not here to tell my story. I'm here to live my story. And he's here to live his story and you're here to live your story and everybody, we're all here to live mm -hmm. our stories and yeah. we can just witness for one another. Mm -hmm. That's what we can do. Wow. Wow. You know, <laughs> right? without, <laughs> without a lot of rigmarole. Yeah. I love Phil's word choice. Yes. And rigmarole is one of those. <laughs> Dilly dally, remember dilly dally? Dilly dally, oh. For a while we were really on dilly dally. Dilly you got to bring that back. <laughs> I think there's just something. There's something about Phil and his humbleness, and, and like you're saying, the words and the just so down to earth that just yeah. resonates with all of us and the kindness and the love. Well, I think that's one of the things. You know, he's got to get it in there. You know, he's got one more line, so he's not he's not dilly dallying around. Yeah, right. He's just like. Let's be there for each other and let's be there for ourselves. And I, I have a question. Yes. For Phil. Yeah. Because I haven't asked you enough questions in our life. Yet. Oh, okay. <laughs> um, you know, one of the things we were talking about yesterday reminded me of one of my favorite stories of yours is about when you came back from the Camino and you got together with Kelly and Rick. Mm. So you hadn't seen them for a couple of weeks. And then you got together with Kelly and Rick and you were really excited to get together with them, but it was awkward. It was and awkward. You had to figure that out. Do, do you want to? Yeah, I wrote a blog about that because I, I, you know, I, the blog might have even been awkward because the whole thing was so awkward. But we had, you know, we had changed. All three of us, we had changed and we sort of didn't, weren't acknowledging it. And we came together and it just where we could see each other. And uh, it was very strange. It was like we weren't our. Um, you weren't you know, we were just a little bit off. Everything was a little bit off. You know? And I was trying to write about that in a blog. And I don't know if I was successful or not. But, um, you know, we were in that transition stage of. Uh, um, coming back to our old life. I think what you were writing about was you were coming back to your old life, thinking that you had to figure out how to fit into your old life. Uh -huh. And what you came to was uh -huh. you had to figure out how to fit your old life into who you are now. Yeah, who and I am now. I'm in a, I'm a different person. And you, the three of you worked through that. Like The three of us had to do that, but we were still sort of in process. Yeah, but I think that's the best yes. description of like, that's bringing back, that's your Camino starting in Santiago. You, you bring your new self to your old life and figure out how to fit the old life in. You don't try to fit into the old life. Right. You know, it's, it was really That's what it takes ultimately. And that's, that's uh, 
after two months, that's where I arrived. Yeah. Two months I, of struggling. Yeah. And yeah. that was so profound. <clears throat> and I, I was thinking about that last night when we were talking about the pandemic. And remember that conversation you were talking about, what do we do now mm -hmm. to not make this last year a waste? Oh, oh, yeah. A waste of time. Yeah. Can you talk about Well, that? I know, but I think we, we all, uh, we've all learned stuff in this year and we have to uh, acknowledge that and we have to, uh, we have to make that into something good, you know, and bring that out. Uh, whatever it is to us, or maybe it's all the same thing to us. I don't know. It's an opportunity. Yeah, it struck me as the, the same thing about that awkwardness with you and Kelly and Rick when yeah. you were figuring it out. And if we don't bring our new selves yeah. forward, then it was just a waste. There's a lot of awkwardness right now. Yeah, There's yeah. a huge amount of awkwardness uh, in all kinds of people and in us. Uh, that we have to sort of figure out. Yeah. Yeah, and I wonder if you could just take a minute and describe our setting. Tell, because tell the people uh, here that are going to be watching Camino Cafe, tell them about our setting here. Our setting, where we are right now. Yeah. We are, um, we are at the Elk Hotel, which is a canvas uh, cabin that we had. Uh, We've we've had uh, we bought 25 years ago, and uh, it's it's very stout, and uh, nothing's going to knock it over. Uh, so this is where I chose to uh, fly away from this, this canvas tent uh, here, and uh, I don't know uh, on our first visit from the uh, hospice nurse. Thank you. Crystal, her name is. And the first visit, uh, she had all these questions, you know, all these questions. And then, then she arrived at this question, which was, do you have a uh, image, image of your death? Do you have some way you're, you're seeing it? And I go, ah, okay, <laughs> ah, ah. okay, ah. okay. Are you ready? And I. And so I was wondering when in this whole process I was going to, you know, get the tent in there. You know, I knew they weren't used to tents. I knew, and I didn't know how it was going to go over, you know. So I go, look at, I got this fantasy. I'm a Civil War general and I'm dying in my tent. Okay. And she goes, Ooh. how about costumes? <laughs> She doesn't bat an eye. Like she was way ahead of me, you know? <laughs> so that fit in nicely to the program. And uh, we've so far got a hospital bed in here and all the gear. Well, maybe not all the gear, but uh, most of the gear for uh, for hospice work. And, uh, so this is where I'm going to be camping out uh, pretty soon. It's right now, it's sort of, we're just putting it together. And it's right mm. outside the back door on the deck. We got a nice floor to tromp around on. This is where the tapas table usually is. Yes. This is where the tapas table usually is, right out. Uh, yeah, right on this surface. Yeah. So this is your spot, and we've all been in and out of here all weekend. weekend. I know. I wanted to have some some sort of nomadic sort of thing. You know, I didn't want it. I didn't want to have some place in the house where. You know, everybody would go, oh, dad died there, you know. So, you know what I mean? I didn't want to have that. So we're moving it out here and we're kind of sharing it, I guess. You know, Catalina, our dear Catalina, she works with Jesuits. Uh -huh. And uh, Phil wrote that amazing blog post recently yeah. where you described this time that you have now graduated from chemo to hospice, which is how you put it. And um, a lot of the Jesuits that she works with love you, and they've seen uh -huh. the film, and some of them have come up here to walk with yes, you. Yes, they have. And when she told them about that blog post, mm -hmm. they were all so happy for you. <laughs> they were uh, good, so happy good, 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 good. Because they feel like you are 
reaching, achieving your pilgrimage. Yes. And she was telling me that, and I was like, oh my gosh, Jill is about to walk into Santiago. I know, and you could look at it other ways too, but yeah, you're right, you're right, you're right, you're right. And right. we're excited for those people who are, you know, at Monte de Gozo and who are going to walk into Santiago the next day. Right, right. That's where I'm at. That's where I'm at. You know, and it's painful. I can hardly walk. <laughs> well, yeah, good thought. Good way to go. Yeah, nice. Uh, you know, and this weekend has given a lot of us a chance to laugh together and a chance to cry together mm -hmm. and to to do some planning well i hope so I, I i looked at it as a place to regroup you know we come mm -hmm. in and we're coming in sort of straggling in as individuals and and we can sort of get together as uh you know the way we should be working uh, uh the way maybe we got fractured over the last year or so and everybody's out of kilter a little bit. We got to like fine tune our equipment and, uh, and, 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 and get together with our friends from that's, before. That's beautiful. Cause that's like, you're reminding us that the Camino is inside of us. So we got to take this Camino into our communities now. Well, is, yeah. yeah, yeah. That's what we do. Inside but we have to recognize that we're all, uh, we're off. We're just a little bit off. Right. You know, and it's causing a lot of problems. You can see it, you know, watch the news. Everybody's a little bit off. Um, so we, we have to like account for that. We have to like figure that out. Like, how do we deal with that? What's the best way to, yeah. to deal with that? I wondered, Phil, um, you know, a lot of the Camino head community, a lot of members couldn't really come mm -hmm. this weekend. And I'm sure that they're watching this, wishing that they were here with you. And I just wondered if you wanted to maybe say a little something to the folks, maybe like Chris that couldn't travel um, this weekend, if you just wanted to say a few words to, to those folks. Well, so this will be available to everybody, right? Yeah. So, okay, that's cool. Um, yeah, Chris, who's like a uh, number one helper uh, on the blog and uh, with, with this project, she took over uh, the RSVP area of this and uh she also did some work on programming so um uh we we she's she's and she's uh doing the blog you know basically she's putting out all the blog posts and people are writing the material and sending it into her mostly but she's putting it together mm -hmm. so chris we love you uh she's on her way to spain she's moving to spain so she's got a little bit too much to do to be here, uh, but um, you know there'll be other times. There'll be other times and places. And then uh, William is up in Calgary uh, for some. I don't know what the border problem is, but there's a border problem. Yeah. 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 Those are two that I know about. Uh, Ron got here, and Anne from. Uh, from Spain, they got here. There's a lot of people who wanted to be here. Oh okay. yeah, they're with I you in Spain. I suppose, yeah. Yeah. In Spain. I yeah. Suppose. Well, I, I think that we probably should wrap up. <coughs> you said to me the other night, Phil, that you still had a lot to say, mm. <laughs> and so we decided to to do these interviews. Um, so before we close, is there anything else? Anybody else you want to say hi to, or anything else that? you'd like to say before we uh, close out the interview? Boy, I don't know. This is like having fresh meat, you know? <laughs> Could we talk all night or what, you know? Hey, we can keep going till the computer uh, says so we it, have to so stop. Well, it, so it dies, yeah, I know. <laughs> I, you know, there's, I, I don't know, the Camino is such a lovely thing that, I don't know, we, we cherish it. We all cherish it. And we all, and we all I think it's very, uh, invigorating to uh, think about that we are the epicenter of that energy. You know, it's sort of up to us to be the epicenter. That's a good way to think about it. Yeah, that's a great way to close. Thank you, Phil. Thank you so much for being here. You're welcome.
And I just want to, yeah, say to everyone. <laughs> thank you, Annie, for joining us oh, here for the interview. Thank you and, for being so gracious. This yeah. was lovely. This is I love talking to this guy. Yeah. <laughs> We all love you, Phil. Oh, geez. You have made Thank our lives better by knowing you. you. So. Thank you. That's, it Thank goes you. two ways. Thank you. All right. Thank you, everyone, for uh, watching our uh, interview today with Phil Volker and Annie O'Neill joining us and everyone here at the Oasis, the Camino Heads. We are <laughs> just so happy to be a part of this Camino community. So thank you until next time. <laughs>